Good evening, everyone. Thank you for coming to our meeting. I'd like to call to order the regular meeting of the Clear Lake City Council and Redevelopment Assessor Agency held here at City of Clear Lake City Hall Chambers at 14050 Olympic Drive in Clear Lake, California, 95422. Today is Thursday. It's November 10th at 6 p.m. And uh, I'd like to have a, an Army vet lead us in the pledge, if you would, sir. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mr. Lewis. Pastor Selly, would you lead us in an invocation? creator of us all. In this, the month of Thanksgiving, we have so much to be thankful for. Thank you for the members of the City Council who have stepped forward to serve and make wise decisions for our community. Please guide them with your wisdom and your strength as they go into this meeting tonight with nothing but the best in mind. And we thank you for all the helpers of this group, the people that answer phones, the people that protect our animals, the people that fill the streets, the people that direct traffic. For them we give thanks, keep them safe, and help them with their jobs. And for the law enforcement family, Please keep them safe, as they keep us safe each and every day of our lives. And most of all, thank you for all the people who love this community and serve it in oh so many ways possible, that it may be a better place to live and a better future for our young people. We ask all these things as we praise you with thankfulness. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. <coughs> Madam Clerk, can you call the roll? <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Beckman. Council Member Overton. Here. Council Member Bennett. Here. Vice Mayor Sabati. Here. Mayor Perdas. Present, and I apologize for jumping out of order. <laughs> Mr. Folsom, any changes to the agenda? Uh, yes, Mayor. I'm going to be um, item number two, which is the presentation of the proclamation declaring November 2016 Native American Heritage Month. We're still hoping to do that, um, but at the next meeting, which will be the special meeting to be held next Wednesday, we're going to have a, a better tribe representation by doing it then. Thank you, Mr. Folsom. Very well. I have a motion to adopt the agenda. Second. A motion to second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. Motion carries unanimously. Moving on to public comment. Public comment is a time that anyone uh, here can speak on a matter, not on our agenda. Uh, you're provided three minutes for that comment. Please remember that as council members, we cannot respond to questions if you ask one directly. Uh, we might direct you to a staff member if they can uh, help you with your, with your issue. So first on the public comment for submitted cards, I'd like to call Rose Anderson, who'd like to talk to us tonight about homelessness. Ms. Anderson, are you here? Thank you. Good evening. Um, we've been having an issue with the homeless lately. Um, there's a lot of homeless camps around here that a lot of these homeless, they don't have no places to go. Um, we were wondering what's, how the um, community is going to help the homeless get to places. 
you know, um, they uh, in showers, you know, places to go to have uh, food, stuff like that. We have a major issue with the high rays. The property owner is wanting everybody off that property, but the homeless there has nowhere to go. Um, is there any recognition of um, offering any help for the homeless to give them somewhere safe to go? Or what? I mean, they're out there fighting, trying to survive as everybody else. I mean, I don't think anybody has um, brought the issue up about the homeless, but we do matter out there. Um, yeah, we, we can't answer questions because this is an agendized item. To do so would be a violation of law. So, but I thank you for bringing this issue to us. But I do want to provide you with some information. Uh, there is, I believe, the bridge that is still open for uh, food. And I believe they also have a shower out there right next to Safeway. And there are a few uh, faith-based organizations that do have soup kitchens uh, during the week as well. Um, the other issue um, on the homeless still is that when um, the city comes in where these homeless camps are at and giving citations to its own to move because it's unlawful camping and that where where is the city going to put us homeless? I mean, they have like nowhere to go. You got people that are mentally disabled, you got physically disabled people. Probably need to talk to you after the meeting to answer those questions. Thank you. Please stay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Next speaker's request card, I am Mr. Keith A. Hart of Golden State Water. Good evening. Feel me off. Um, I'm Keith with Golden State Water Company. Um, I just wanted to advise the council and the general public of a pipeline project that we have beginning December 5th. It's approximately 1,600 feet of uh, mainline replacement on Country Club Drive between Arrowhead Road and Lakeshore Drive. Uh, it will be adding um, fire uh, fire hydrants where there currently are none. It's a substandard main, it's a two inch main that we're replacing with an eight inch. So there'll be uh, fire suppression efforts uh, that will be to be made now. Um, make sure I hit all my points. There will be traffic controls in place during construction uh, with some minor detours in the area. Um, when the roads are blocked, there will be alternate routes uh, and flaggers. Uh, we will provide 48 hour notice ahead of time for any um, anything major that we do that affects services. Um, and if there's anybody who needs to contact us for any reason, you can contact me at my office 994-9118 or our customer service center um, 24 hours a day, seven days a week at 800-999-4033. Anyone else wishing to speak on public comment? Do you want me to add? I have to reset my time. <laughs> <laughs> There's simple rules. <laughs> you have a construction flyer that has most of the information. And if you would, please leave some at maybe the back room if you have extra. Okay, so the public can be aware. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak in public comment that has not submitted a speaker card? Uh, Joe, did you want to talk? I'm talking. I'm sorry. No, no. Did, did you want to come up and <laughs> talk about the dance tomorrow night? Of course. I, I believe the chamber has an announcement to make. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, I pretty bad. Joe. My card. Oh, um, I'm Joe Bennett, uh, president of the um, Clear Lake Chamber of Commerce. And tomorrow night we are having a um, bash at uh, the American Legion. It starts at 6 o'clock. 
and um, it's not a dinner, but it is a dance, and um, it's um, on uh, Austin Road. Isn't that where uh, American Legion is? Not on Austin Road. So it's ten dollars. Um, please feel free to come by. We'd love to have your company. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak on a topic not on our agenda? Seeing none, I will close public comment and move on to uh, presentations. Just jump around the dike. Keep us on our toes, because I can. Do I have any representatives from hospice in the audience tonight? Please come up. Back here, you can see it. The camera there, and everybody likes to see your face on TV. <laughs> So Hospice of Lake County is a very dynamic group. Um, personally, I've uh, had their services uh, come into our home on two different occasions, um, uh, when I lost my stepfather and when I lost my mom. Um, ironically, tonight, or this afternoon, I had a client um, who's still mourning the loss of his parents and his spouse, and he's been able to take your grieving counseling service, and it's just such a tremendous um, service that you offer. I mean, from those last days that they're with us, um, helping them transition to um, the grieving process that can last for years as we try to deal with that, with that loss. And uh, Lake County Hospice is just amazing. So this being November and the month that we recognize home health services, I, I would like to read our proclamation uh, for, for what you've done. <coughs> Whereas hospice care employ, employers, people, employees, take two, John, start, start over. Hospice care empowers people to live as fully as possible, surrounded and supported by the family and loved ones, despite serious life-limiting illnesses. Whereas hospice services of Lake County and transitions care provides patients and family caregivers the highest quality of care delivered by a team of skilled professionals that includes physicians, nurses, social workers, bereavement counselors, health aides, and spiritual care providers, as well as trained volunteers. Whereas 36% of the 262 patients receiving care to date in 2016 are Clear Lake residents, and 35% of the community bereaved receiving services are residents of Clear Lake. In 2015, 150 community volunteers provided 12,865 hours of service in support of the mission of hospice services of Lake County. Whereas every year hospice saves Medicare more than $2 billion nationally by providing solutions for physicians, care to patients, and comfort anywhere at any time. Whereas hospice and palliative care providers encourage all people to learn more about options of care, to share their wishes and with family, loved ones, and with their health care professionals. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that the City of Clear Lake, along with Hospice Services of Lake County, is hereby designate November 2016 as Hospice and with Palliative Care Month and calls upon the citizens and leaders of government agencies, public and private institutions, and businesses in the city to increase their awareness and understanding of the care at the end of life. They did this 10th day of November, 2016. Thank you very, very much. Well, you're very welcome. Thank you very much. We're very honored to have this proclamation. Uh, we would like to extend uh, an invitation to all of you to attend our uh, Light of a Life commemorative um, session. That would be Saturday evening at 6.30 at Highland Senior Center. This is the first year that we've um, broken apart, if you will, where we're doing the light of the life. Uh, we're doing, we did one in Lake Court, one here in Clear Lake, and then we'll be doing one next week in Middletown. So people can come more conveniently to a spot nearer to their homes. Okay. Thank you very much. We're very honored. Is there any, any fee? And it, it's, free. it's free. It's free. It's free, everyone. Homemade cookies. At Highlands Community Center. Center. 
Six thirty. Right down behind Safeway That's at right. six thirty. That's right. Really do. Thank you. Help me with that one too. Don't be a record of 
And I know I see the Valentines. Well, at least one Valentine. Thank you. Kathleen Stewart. Chuck and Vicki Leonard, are they? <laughs> How great to see you. I don't ever see you at a meeting like this. Thank you so much. Joan Cox? Joanne, sorry. Oh, you bet. And Cheryl is not here. Cheryl Hutchinson, thank you very much for your donation. I have one of our planning commissioners. Yeah. Folks, it, it really does take a village. Um, and a lot of these faces you see here uh, doing a lot of things in our community, not just the trick or treat, but Christmas parades and Fourth of July parades and just stapling papers uh, for meetings and and coming down and filling bags of candy that, from all the people that made donations and, and everything else. And I'll tell you, um, it, it does make a difference. It really makes a difference. And what a great turnout to have all those kids down here smiling and having fun. Thank you so, so much um, for all you do. Because uh, it, it's making our town better. And that's what we want. So anything you'd like to say? That was fantastic. Well, you know, I, I understand that, that do we want to get into specifics? I know P Cecil's Pizza brought down how many pizzas? 24. 24. 24. Okay. Um, candy from foods, etc. The chamber was awesome in getting the word out to all of the businesses. Um, Alvaro brought candy. Walmart uh, donated $400 for wow. <laughs> And Karen and Dale Valentine donated candy and Toys and their time. <coughs> thank you so much. Chuck and Mickey, I can't even thank you enough. Exactly. You're down here a lot, and thank you for your volunteering. We sure appreciate it. Yeah. Um, and for all the folks that couldn't be here tonight, thank you. Thank you very much. I'm sorry you couldn't be here. Um, no pressure. We got a Christmas parade coming up, and I hope to see you <laughs> uh, real soon. I hope everybody at Chamber out there in TV land is paying attention because we want to see a lot of great Christmas floats. <coughs> Um, so we can ring the holiday, and that will be Saturday the 3rd, I believe, is our Christmas parade. Um, thank you again very much. Can I have a round, big round of applause? Yeah. collected and distributed 5,000 toys to needy children. 
1948, the Marine Corps um, Reserve adopted it and expanded it nationwide. Since then, the Marine Reserves have collected and distributed more than 500 million toys. <clears throat> like I said, the Lake County Toys for Tops was brought to Lake County 10 years ago as an official Marine Corps Reserve program. Prior to that, I was friends of the Mendocino County, County uh, Toys for Tots coordinator, and we picked up toys from Ukiah and distributed to several churches and organizations here in Clear Lake uh, for approximately two years. <clears throat> in a normal year, we distribute toys to approximately 500 to 600 families in just Lake County alone. All toys and contributions, though, that are collected here stay in Lake County, totally. Nothing goes to Mendocino. We don't receive anything from Mendocino anymore. Everything stays 100% here. Because of the fires last year, changed a few things, a few, few more needy people, <clears throat> and uh, so we had to kind of pick up to make sure that we had enough toys for the county, and I was able to bring in uh, a little over 20,000 from just the U.S. Marines alone. Um, the Toys for Tot unit out of Eureka sent us down close to $15,000. Uh, Toys R Us donated probably closer to uh, $15,000 worth of toys. Um, we collected locally 3,009 toys. We had more organizations and businesses that contributed than ever before. Um, <clears throat> last year we served 1,338 families, 2,474 children. We gave out 6,656 toys and <clears throat> 4,960 uh, stocking stuffers. And this was somewhere between 65 and $70,000. And uh, we're not 100% sure because I didn't keep full track of it. We had it at Burns Valley School last year. Uh, we Normally, we'll try to serve the south end one year, the north end the other year. Uh, but because of the fires, we chose to stay here in, uh, in Clear Lake this year again. Um, one of the reasons we chose Burn Valley is because it seems like, with few exceptions, every year that we have our distribution, rain decides to come. And so they've got a large covered area for people to be under, okay, while they're waiting. Um, we uh, <clears throat> utilize the um, AmeriCorps, okay, to do a lot of, of our uh, standing out in front of Walmart and Kmart every weekend, okay, up until uh, we have our distribution. This year, the distribution will be on December the 17th, and it will be from 7 o'clock in the morning until 6 o'clock in the evening. It appears that every year we have a, quite a few people that can't make it, and so therefore we do open up on the following Monday, probably here at the fire station or somewhere here in Clear Lake for those that couldn't make it. and somewhere up in Lakeport, okay, for that, that end of the lake. We um, aren't really going after publicity and so forth, and so you don't really hear too much about it, okay, in the, in the papers and so forth. Maybe we should do a little bit more, but um, there'll be an article out about distribution again and so forth. And uh, we go from there. We, we want to really thank, here again, Walmart and Kmart for 
a lot of their contribution. Uh, the fire department does a great job. Uh, there's, there's just a, a number of people here that, that really contribute heavily. I don't know if there's any other information that you're looking for or if you have any questions. Dave, where are some of your drop-off points so we can let people know if they have a, a present, maybe the condition of the present that you expect? We, we have approximately 150 <coughs> drop-off points around the lake. Um, locally here, uh, Mendel Mill, almost all of the grocery stores, the banks, um, there's a few places that we would like to get in, but okay. will not allow us, okay, for whatever reason. And uh, I'd like to publicize their location sometimes, you know, on okay. for Conditions of the gifts, what, what should people bring? Uh, basically, we're looking for any kind of, of toy whatsoever. What we, what we give each child is, uh, and these are unwrapped gifts. Um, is they, they each the, the parents can can choose two five dollar and above and one ten dollar and above. Now that five dollar and above is probably going to go up closer to twenty five dollar. The ten dollar and above we have things that are well over a hundred dollars. We have uh, Toys R Us this year that donated probably three or four, 300 and above items, uh, dollar items, okay? And so far, probably 10 that are 150 and above. And what we will do with some of the more expensive ones that we have done in the past is put them up for raffle. We give everybody that's coming in a raffle ticket and to where they have a choice for those expensive items. And then we will raffle them off toward the end of the, of the distribution. We have approximately 70 people that are helping with the distribution. I would like to invite the council, anybody from the city, to at least come down and see what we do. You know, see the distribution. Um, <clears throat> So far, I just talked to Doug here this morning, and I got a, a call from a company up in Seattle uh, just a week ago, and today we unloaded a truckload of 10 pallets that were 107, what, excuse me, 17 cases per pallet, six toys per box, okay? Um, I have two storage spaces at uh, Jim's Mini Storage. They are right now full. Um, I am going down to Toys R, Toys R Us again this Saturday. They called me and uh, they've got another truckload for me. So, you know, we're, we're very thankful for these large corporations that are helping. Wonderful. Anyone else have a question? I have a question, but I do have a remark. I mean, Dave, you and your wife are just, I mean, they're awesome. They're uh, really great to work with. We've been doing this for years, and it's, uh, you know, if you want something that's really, you know, really puts your heart into the holidays, there's nothing else is going down and working at the Toys for Toss and helping them put it together. It does take a lot of people to put this together because they do have to separate out all the toys. They have to separate out the boys, the girls, and stuff. So, you know, they do need these volunteers, so you never can have too many volunteers. Um, and also is you never can have too many gifts because there's always kids after, even after the giveaway that I probably end up calling David and saying, I've got to have a couple of toys, somebody's come by and don't have something. So there's always, always wear those toys in. Also that if there is any leftover, they just carry over to the next year so they don't, they still don't go out of the county, so they always stay here. Um, and as usual, you know, year round, we take at the youth center there, uh, any toys that we would get would always go to the Toys for Toss at the end, you know, at the end of the year. So uh, they normally have a box, which I hope they'll drop one off again, uh, there at the youth center. It kind of makes it convenient for people in town to just drop off on that side too. So, uh, but you guys do an awesome job. All your volunteers are really great. And it's, uh, um, it's always, they always need help though, outside, especially when, when the lines start lining up. <laughs> so, but they do a great job and it's been, it's been really my honor to, to work with you all these years on this Toys for Tots. Thank you, sir. Thank you. 
And when is that again? 17th. December 17th. December 17th. What time? From 7 o'clock in the morning until 6 o'clock in the evening. Okay. And which you have? Burns, Burns Valley School. If volunteers want to come down and help, what, when the, should they uh, contact you? We, they have school on the 16th and school gets out at one o'clock and that's when we are allowed in. Okay. Okay, so we will be setting up uh, in the cafeteria from basically one o'clock till about eight o'clock or until we get finished on the, the 16th and, you know, ready to help those that, uh, that are coming. We have people that spend the night, mm -hmm. um, you know, just, just to try to get in there and so forth. But this is another reason why we don't um, have all of the real expensive gifts. And one thing that we do is we don't put everything out at the very beginning. We try to spread it out throughout the day to where right. there are new gifts, same value as in the morning, going out throughout the day. Sounds like a good plan. And this was started by the uh, Marines? This is started by the, the Marine Corps Reserves. Ironically, today's kind of a, a date that's special for Marines, I understand. It is the one birthday of the Marine Corps today? It, was, it is. So yes, happy birthday to the Marines and thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you for having me.
last year we demoed a couple of buildings. You might recognize this across from uh, Howard's Grotto. Uh, we received $160,000 from a, um, a department called Cal Recycle, which is a California State uh, Department. Uh, they gave us $160,000 to do that demo. We were able to get it done for considerably less, so we've got additional monies left over. We kind of went through the whole city looking at what were some of the um, burned out, blighted homes that we could actually take advantage of this money to do additional demolition. And um, that's what this money will be for uh, before, is to do a uh, asbestos survey. We're required to um, make sure that any of the homes that we take down are, don't have any asbestos, and if they do, to abate it. Uh, these are the 10 properties that we're looking to be able to uh, demolish. Uh, I'm very happy uh, about this list. In fact, I met with a property owner pretty close to uh, the time that I was hired. Somebody called me out and said, look at this burned out building right across the street from us. Every time it rains, it stinks. And what can you do for us? And uh, this is what we're going to be able to do. We've got a limited amount of money, so we're hoping to be able to get all 10 of those properties. The ones that are, are in bold are the ones that have to be, uh, have the asbestos survey. The other ones are in such a state of burn that it really makes no difference. So uh, APCD said that we didn't have to do those. We did put out a notice inviting bids. It was advertised for the asbestos survey. Geocon Consulting provided the lowest responsible bid in the amount of $4,975. Even though the project is less than $20,000, and that's typically the threshold where I bring projects to you all, because it's part of a larger project, which would include the demolition, we're bringing this to you um, to council for consideration. Uh, as we did last uh, time we had one of these, not this type of a thing, but when we had a, uh, another contract, I think at the last council meeting, this is going to be a pretty regular type of thing that I'll be asking is for the additional 10% um, contingency authorization, just in case something comes up where there's uh, rather than having to stop it and bring it back to you all, if it's just within 10%, then I'll make the judgment whether it's something um, that's reasonable or not. So our recommended action is to award the bid to Geocon Consultancy in the amount of 4975 and authorize the city manager to approve change orders, if necessary, up to 10% of the contract bid award. I wouldn't anticipate that there'd be any change orders, but again, I just want to cover that base. Sure. Vice Mayor? I just wanted to mention that even though it's less than 20000 I really appreciate you bringing it to us in the first place because making it public lets everybody know what we're working on and what's going to happen in the near future in our community, and this is awesome. Anyone else have a comment, question? Okay, very good. Anyone from the public wanting to uh, speak on this matter, please come forward. Very well, I'll bring it back. motion that we award a bid to Geocon Consultants Incorporate, Incorporate in the amount of $4,975 and authorize city manager to approve change orders if necessary up to 10% of the contract bid award. I'll second. I have a motion and a second. I'll we can have a roll call vote. Council Member Overton? Aye. Council Member Bennett? Aye. Vice Mayor Sabatier? Aye. Mayor Purdoff? Aye. Thank you very much. Item 10, consideration of the city seal and logo use policy. Mr. Folsom. Thank you, Mayor. As everybody hopefully is aware, we just recently approved the new city seal or logo, which is uh, right there in front of you. It's uh, very bright and happy and uh, we like it. The city currently does not have a policy, however, for the use of the city seal um, by others. Um, we've had situations in the past where people have tried to misrepresent themselves by using uh, the city seal on their thing, so we're trying to make sure that that doesn't happen anymore. Uh, we don't want there to be any misrepresentation um, by others. Um, the city seal or logo is the property of the city and should only be used for official purposes only or is authorized by the city manager or designee. No one should use a similar logo to deceive the public. The city seal cannot be used for supporting or opposing candidates for election or for ballot measures, and an application for the use of the city seal or logo will be available to the public. 
Our recommended action is to approve the use of the city seal and local policy. Very good. <coughs> Thank you. Any questions for staff? Oh, okay. Mr. Mayor. Go ahead, President. Um, so let's say uh, an organization that's inside the city limits would like to include uh, the city seal on their documents. They would fill out this application and then apply for that um, usage on their documents along with their logo. That would right, be right. but it typically would be something where we're in sponsorship with them or supporting them somehow, not just uh, to put the city seal just because. So it would be for if we have an event, Exactly. Somebody wants to use a city seal saying we're sponsoring them, then we would allow them to use a city seal by filling this out. Right. So uh, if there was an event and they want to put our uh, seal like a banner or flyer or advertisement, as long as we're a sponsor or somehow um, involved with it, then we would authorize that. Let's say they want to advertise out of the city, their organization, but they still want people to kind of know that they're in the city of Clear Lake. Would that not be uh, something we would consider? Uh, probably not. Not if they're just advertising themselves. In the city. Well, it, it would depend on where you talk about well, that's what I'm saying. If, I'm just saying, if, would they be able to apply and talk to you about saying we'd like to use the logo? We're advertising in San Francisco this event that we're having. Um, even though the city may not be, per se, providing any money or anything, but they still are advertising in another area that Clear Lake is the place to come, would, they be, would that be something they'd be... Potentially, because if, if it's something where... Uh, again, we don't want to necessarily just have anybody do that unless it's something that benefits our community somehow. Well, that's what I'm thinking. Advertising, and clearly, like if they're advertising out of the area, the logo is such a, you know, a catchy logo that anything that we could do if another business is willing to put our logo advertising our city along with their event uh, that they're having here would be, to me, something. It would be for consideration. Right. Any other questions or comments? I would think the cutoff point might be Is that. I would think that the uh, cutoff point might be if it was for profit, the city would not allow it. If it was mutually, uh, you know, uh, where the city would benefit from it, along with the entity. It needs to be something and where this either the city itself or the community overall, um, right. but that's where we would have to look at but it. But not an organization doing it for profit, even yeah. advertising the city or community in the Bay Area, but if they're doing it for profit, I would, yeah. I would not necessarily go along with that. And I would disagree with that if it's something that's benefiting. There's lots of things that do. We do things for profit, but, but yes, yeah, still could benefit if somebody's coming in from the city to stay at our hotels and <coughs> dinner, but yet another organization might be charging for them to come here, but they still may benefit from it. So I wouldn't necessarily say that would be true. I just wanted to know if that was something that would even be considered. Yeah, on a case-by-case -case basis. That sounds reasonable. I'd like to open this up for public comment. Anyone wishing to address council on this item, please step forward. City of Clear Lake, uh, if you put the city seal on something, it makes it look like you're approving it. So I think your caution is a, a very good idea. I don't think you just want to put it on anything. If you give them permission, it's pretty hard to know what they're going to do with it then. So I think we ought to be on the side of caution. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak on this matter? Please step forward. Very well, seeing none, I'll bring it back. Is there any member of staff have any any comment as far as the seal is concerned? No? Okay. Council members? Go ahead. Okay, so I fill out this here application or, or proposal that I want to use the seal. I would still have to bring back the final, you know, uh, approve for you guys to pr approve it, right? Okay, and then we would have that on record, showing that that's all that they would be able to use it for, correct? Uh, for the most part, I mean, if, if if they're putting it on a banner, I mean, I can't get it. If it's a flyer or something, then yeah, I'd have a copy of that. Well, yeah. Well, they can still give you a proof of the banner, though. Yeah, or something, something like that. that. Yeah. If it's feasible, then yes. Right. Okay. Anything else? Mr. Folsom, if there was uh, a future need that maybe we might need to uh, look at a different, maybe a subdued color scheme for the seal itself, 
is there latitude within this policy that would allow um, a department of, of the city to do that? I'll just cut right to the chase. It's a very bright seal. Mm -hmm. um, I was concerned about how it might uh, be used on our uh, patches, used on uniforms. It would kind of be a, a very bright thing in a, in a dark environment that um, could be an officer safety issue. So I was wondering if maybe we could uh, look at subduing it a little bit, maybe taking some of that officer safety issue away. Uh, it's something that we can talk about it. Um, talk it as part of the um, uh, norms and procedures policy, and, and I believe it's in the norms and procedures policy, any changes to the seal has to be authorized by the city council. So it's something right. that we would have to bring back to you to take a look at. And since it's here right now, I thought that's why I would bring it up. Okay. Um, You're saying the colors are too bright for their, for what their patches is, how our logos are. Do you have a logo on? Do you have an opinion on that, Lieutenant Sully? Because that's still pretty bright. <clears throat> uh, yes. Uh, what I'm kind of hoping to do is to get a committee together for a patch design. I would certainly uh, love to have a city council member as a part of that logo design for our patch, um, authorized by the mayor, of course, and the city manager. Um, and if we could look at maybe toning down some of the colors, that would be helpful um, with some of the staff and, and things like that. So. Yeah, so if that's something you all would like us to do, then we can start. Not necessarily changing the look, right? but so just toning it down as far as the brightness of it. And that would be specifically for the officer patches. That, that would be my concern. Councilman Lebedev? No, I agree. Okay. okay. So um, can we work, can we add that in tonight? That, uh, I think we just bring that back separately. Okay. Okay. And you I still have to bring back the proof, kind of what we're right. going to be doing. Exactly. So, yeah. No, but I, I, I understand what you're saying now. So, uh, so I'm fine with that. So, so are we just we're just wanting the, a motion to um, approve Ruby the use of the logo. Is that a motion? That's a motion. Second. <laughs> <laughs> that was motion and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Well done. Mr. Folsom, do you have a report for us tonight? A couple of things. Um, first of all, uh, last week, our, my city clerk and myself, or our city clerk and myself, we attended the California Public Employer Labor Relations Association, also known as CalPELRA. Um, got a lot of really good information with regard to uh, labor negotiations, um, dealing with uh, ma marijuana and employee rights and those types of things. So it was a very valuable uh, meeting for us to attend. Also this week, I met with uh, the Mendo Lake Credit Union and the Community First Credit Union. Uh, the Community First Credit Union will be taking over uh, or merging with Mendo Lake Credit Union. So there will be a, a new, same faces, but different look over there uh, in the next year. Uh, that information is out there, so I'm not breaking news. Um, we had today our marijuana ad hoc committee first meeting for um, the potential changes, uh, thanks to Prop 64 and other reasons. Uh, we had very good results with our existing ordinance, but we know that there's ways that we can tweak it to make it even better. And with Prop 64, there are various issues where we are just going to have to make changes. So we had our first meeting today. We're going to have a couple of different subcommittee meetings and future meetings. We're hoping to get this back to council early next year so that we can get this in place for the next growth season. So that will be coming back to you. Uh, as everyone I'm hopefully is aware, Measure B has tentatively been uh, passed by the voters, so I want to thank the voters very much for that. Uh, and I say tentatively because it came in at 67.3%. Six, it's because it's a special tax, it needs to get a 66.7 essentially percent um, passage rate. So it's a little over half a percentage point. However, we still have some absentee ballots that are out there, so we're waiting for the final count to hopefully find out that it has passed. So. Um, I want to thank all the staff, um, the council for being involved, the public, um, everybody who supported this measure because um, 
Uh, we've tried this a few times in the past, and this is the first time that we will hopefully come to fruition on it, so I just want to thank everybody for that. Uh, it was discussed earlier, but I just want to reiterate, on December 3rd, we are going to be having our Christmas parade and tree lighting ceremony, and uh, so hopefully everyone will be participating in that. And um, finally, uh, congratulations to Council Members Overton, Council Member Bennett, uh, and Phil Harris for being elected to the Council, and I'm looking forward to working with all of you in the future. That concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Polson. Council Member Overton. Okay, well, so say, um, we had an awesome truck or treat, even though we were rained out, we didn't have the whole indoor like you guys did here with all the people coming in and out, but uh, I was really surprised that we ended up, I don't know, there's so many people piled in there, but we even put the awnings and everything out the walkway, so we had two lines going everywhere. Uh, we ran out of food, uh, which is always good that we've served enough people that we ran out of food, so on that side we probably had about 15 to 2,000 uh, between the whole night going in and out, so it was a great event. Um, hopefully next year it doesn't rain. It's the first year that it didn't stop raining for us. So we always think, oh, it's going to rain, but it always stops. But this year it did not stop. So, But it seemed like everybody had a lot of fun. A lot of the same people that came here to the city hall came down there. So it looks like we have spread it out enough that um, I think we give breaks to other uh, uh, portions of Clear Lake of uh, having everybody swamp in there. So that's kind of nice to do that. Um, and it, it's not a long time that we're there. We're there from 4 to 8. So it just kind of that break for the young kids to, to be able to have a safe place. We had a great time. Lots of costumes, our haunted house, the kids did a great job on that. Uh, everybody really liked it. So I um, really want to thank everybody that helped with that and donated to that. And we really appreciate all your help. Um, our, um, we had, I went to a tiny house talking about the homeless. We were talking about stuff we're still working on, like different ways that maybe we could um, do something with the tiny houses for our area. So I hope that we're going to be working on an ordinance, I'm assuming, because this has become such a popular thing. I did look up some of the president was the first one that did that uh, as far as an ordinance. So there is kind of some things. So we hope staff we start looking at maybe something if we're going to, if we are or we're not going to do something with that because it's becoming kind of a popular way to go. Uh, I just don't know if that's something that we're going to do, but I'd like to kind of maybe put that on an agenda to talk about how we're going to handle or are we going to handle or are we going to do an ordinance to work on that. So um, hopefully that will be coming up this next year. I'm going to assume that we'll be talking about more on that because it's going to become a big topic. Uh, like that Greg has really talked to me a lot this week and helped me with some of our, um, uh, with the, the different organizations that I work with in our marijuana and, and some policies <laughs> that we work on. So thank you for going to that meeting to be able to help me out because it just shows that they go to the meetings but it can benefit other, other organizations outside of just the city. So um, if you have any questions, he's been very great to help me uh, you know, answer all of those. Um, I'd like to thank everybody for re-electing me. It's been my pleasure to serve the past four years, or 12 years, and I look forward to serving the next four years. And I, I really uh, think that uh, we're going to have a great council with Phil, and we, we've got this, uh, uh, probably the best council, I think, in the years that I've been here, uh, here in Clear Lake, that we're going to really see a lot of things moving forward. So I really hope the public kind of keeps an eye and see that we're really positive thinking, and uh, let's just we're going to get things done this next Four years, I think we're going to really see some changes. And also, um, since this is our only meeting, oh no, we're meeting on the 16th, huh? So, but that's kind of a special meeting. People might not see it, so I'm going to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving anyway at this one. So, thank you. Thank you, Judge. Remember better. Uh, I'd like to echo uh, Councilwoman uh, uh, sentiments on the election. Thank God it's over. <laughs> uh, I don't know if I ever want to go through uh, that again, but we'll see. Uh, and again, thank you. Thank you for all the people uh, that supported us uh, and supported the city and what they've done. Uh, let's all keep our fingers crossed for uh, uh, Measure B. It is so important to our community. Last Monday, I attended along with uh, another council member, uh, Bruno, and uh, some city staff, a Lake Transit Hub meeting that was here at uh, City Council, and they were discussing alternative locations for the uh, bus stop that will probably, that will have to be relocated as uh, Rays is closing down and selling. 
uh, uh, their property. They do not own that property where the bus stop is up there. And there's a lot of uh, considerations to take into place. Uh, some areas that are being uh, discussed are over by Safeway, over by uh, Woodland College, uh, over by uh, the water park development area. And uh, so they're going back to the drawing board after our probably what two hour meeting the other day. And uh, it was a very informative meeting for me. And uh, I think for everybody, a great, great group of people there and everybody was open to all the ideas. And we had a lot of varying ideas coming up. Uh, the problems that are inherent in that of, of uh, people uh, going through schools uh, to get to the, uh, wherever the, uh, the new hub will be, the tr uh, place will be, uh, security problems, uh, homeless problems, and uh, safety problems. So uh, that was an informative meeting, and there will be follow-ups to that uh, because the time timing of that is crucial. It's uh, going to have to be decided shortly. Other than that, thank God the election's over. <laughs> now we can get to work. Appreciate it. Vice Mayor? It's been a busy time for me, especially since I missed our last council meeting together. Um, while I was gone, I was down in uh, Santa Barbara for the Cal LAFCO, uh, committee that I was uh, set upon by this uh, council to be on, and I learned quite a lot down in Santa Barbara. It's uh, my first time ever being on Cal LAFCO, and uh, the amount of information to soak in was uh, quite incredible. Um, I wish I could go into huge amounts of details, but it's uh, land use, It's uh, it can be very, tough to and dry material to go through. But overall, when it comes to our city and the way we're building it and uh, ways that we're looking at doing better, uh, it's an important thing to look at um, land use and preservation of uh, agricultural land all around us as well. Um, let me think here. When I got right back, I went to Trump Retreat. I thought it was fabulous. Uh, I definitely want to thank the Youth Center and all those involved and all those that donated for the cause to uh, make it happen, uh, and I'm just going to give one quick example. I'm sure that Joyce might be able to help out more. Uh, but at the last second, I went to Four Corners uh, to uh, get their uh, tower lights, and Four Corners donated. Um, they, they, we had a lineup of people right in front here. Um, the way that our community gives to make our community shine is amazing. And uh, that, that's, that's what we have here. And, and I really want to appreciate that and make sure to make that uh, statement. Uh, then afterwards, had a uh, coffee with a cop over at the El Grande. Um, and uh, very interesting to every time I'm sitting down listening to our police officers on uh, what's going on and what can be done. I'm learning something new. So I advise anyone, someone that whenever there's a coffee with a cop meeting, please come. Uh, it's a very uh, informal type of situation where you can just ask questions um, and I think it's a very great way to learn who our police officers are and learn what the rules are and how it is that we can change our actions to make our city, our neighborhoods, and our businesses safer. Um, unfortunately, later that night I wasn't able to go to the uh, business meeting uh, and I hope that went well. Um, on November 7th, I went to Lake Transit Hub. Um, Council Member Bennett already went over that, so I won't say the same thing again. Um, November 8th, I'm crossing my fingers that those last ballots counted will keep us over the threshold for Measure V. Uh, I'm really proud of our community. On November 8th, um, we decided that we needed to stand up for ourselves. Um, everything that is going to give us a benefit in our community was voted on, and, and that, that makes me really happy. That makes me smile. That makes me feel like Overall, as a city, we've motivated our residents to want to continue the work that we've already started. Uh, congratulations to the uh, elected officials as well. I'm sure you are very done with campaigning. I think I, I know I was happy myself, <coughs> Joyce especially. <laughs> um, and then today had a very long meeting at our marijuana ad hoc committee. Um, lively conversation and I'm looking forward to seeing what we get out of it. So, um, 
that's been my busy time. And even though it's already been said, please come out for our December 3rd Christmas Parade. If you have a business, if you just want to be in the parade, please come to City Hall, grab a form, sign up, be a part of this community parade, or else, you know, grab a blanket, come and check it out, and uh, it's always fun to be there and experience it. So, that's my report. Thank you, Vice Mayor. <clears throat> really quick, um, I wanna, I'm going to focus my report on the police department. Um, it's okay, don't get nervous. <laughs> Doing good things. Uh, a week ago, the uh, Lieutenant Acting Chief held a meeting here uh, and encouraged all the business owners um, from Burns Valley Mall to come down to work on issues that they were seeing um, on the mall property. He invited the uh, uh, partial owner and manager of the property to uh, also come. It was a really good uh, conversation. Uh, Lieutenant Selly did a fantastic job in facilitating that meeting. Um, had his key players there from the department to talk about the issues that they're seeing. And uh, collaboratively, uh, a very good meeting. And I think there'll be a follow-up coming, but trying to make um, not just Burns Valley, but our shopping centers safe. Um, safe for all the people that are coming there to do business, to feel safe as they're going uh, in and out of the businesses. And uh, I learned a lot, a lot from that meeting, and it was great to see. So thank you very, very much for doing that. Um, keep up the good work. The other thing that I received, um, new to me as mayor, um, I received a report from the Biennial uh, Board of State and Community Corrections. They come down uh, biannually and uh, conducted a, a survey of our custodial facilities. Um, very impressed. Um, cleared it all with uh, flying colors. And uh, also, I'd like to commend Sergeant Hobbs for being there and showing through the facility, answering all their questions. Um, they were very impressed with his professionalism and courtesy. So thank you very much. And uh, if you'd like, I'm happy to donate the letter I received uh, for his file. OK, you do? Good. We do have a lot going on. I do appreciate everyone coming out tonight and sitting through this meeting. Kind of a short one, but um, don't worry, we'll have longer ones. You can try to make through those marathons next year coming up. We've got a couple of big ones happening. On the uh, Christmas parade, Saturday, December 3rd, if you're a business, great. We'd love to see your float and your participation. Um, but also, if you just like to be open, lots of cool things happen when cities participate in a program like this, being open, maybe offering some hot chocolate and things for the folks. Um, watching the parade go by, but also our service clubs and uh, fraternal organizations. I hope to see some great floats out there. Come get involved, contact your chamber, and uh, sign up, because uh, it was wonderful last year. We had some great caroling. All the kids uh, that doing some good stuff at our high school and the other schools at the Keck were down singing carols, and it was just a wonderful, great place to be, filled with the start of the season off right. What time? Um, typically, it starts at um, just as the sun's going down, so right about five. I think the parade starts at six. We approved uh, the closure of the street for that at time, so uh, I think that's when it will kick off. Usually lasts about two hours. So, and Santa's down here typically uh, to get posed with some pictures for the kids. That just comes all the way down from the North Pole for that. I'll be there. I thought you might want to get your picture taken with Santa. Since you knew him when he was a kid. Anyway, that concludes my report. Oh. Okay, okay. So we're having a special meeting um, on Wednesday the 16th. I'm thankful Nick didn't hear me today. And uh, it's going to be a, a combination meeting from our planning commissioners as well as city council. And uh, we'll be talking about. We'll be talking about the uh, draft of the master plan for Austin Park, and uh, thank you for bringing this up. Uh, the general plan update is now on the street, so the draft is out there. It's available on our website, and we'll be doing some preliminary conversations about that on Wednesday. Wonderful. So we've got some more good things coming on. Mr. Harris, I feel like I can call you council member when you're sworn in. Congratulations. Everyone else, great job, Chairman, on our Measure B. Um, Again, everybody keep, keep your fingers crossed that uh, we meet that threshold once it's ratified. Have a wonderful night. We're concluded.